Hello and good morning from the Italian capital Rome. Now today we'll be taking a trip aboard a high-speed fresher Rossa service through to Milan in business class, which is sort of a bit like first class. So obviously I uh, covered the uh, fresher Rossa a couple of years ago in executive, but today we'll be taking the main flagship, the fresher Rossa 1000. So it should be a good trip, just going to head across the road to the station and yeah, let's head to Milan. Now, conveniently for my seemingly rather dazed self, the station was located just across the road from our hotel. This is the city's main station, Roma Termini, where pretty much all high speed and long distance trains depart from. The station is located in the city centre, about half a kilometre northeast of the famous Colosseum, and has been serving the Italian capital for the last 160 years, having first opened in 1862. It is Italy's busiest station, serving around 150 million passengers per year. Now trust me, the station isn't usually this devoid of people. It's just, I guess, that this isn't exactly where most people want to be at 25 past 6. There appears to be quite a bit of construction work going on here at the moment, but this is usually where you'd find a fairly good selection of shops and restaurants. Moving towards the front of the station, we find what I guess is the station's booking hall, with both ticket machines and a ticket office for both the national operator, FS Trenitalia, and open access operator, Italo. If you want to see what the latter has to offer on the Rome to Milan route, then be sure to check out the video in the top right corner of the screen now. <laughs> Moving up a level, you'll find some more shops and eateries. It's also up here that you'll find the Trenitalia Lounge. This is available to passengers travelling in executive class, as well as if you are a business Salotino passenger. That's to say the four-seater compartments that they have on the older ETR 500 trains. Again, video in the top right corner. You can also enter if you're a platinum or gold Carta Frescia holder. Or, if you're not any of these, simply pay 20 euros to enter. Anyway, our train, which is the 0650 departure to Milano Centrale, train number AV9608, will soon be departing from Platform 4. So, we'll head down there in a moment. But first, a bit about today's video sponsors, Skillshare. Skillshare is a fantastic online learning community, featuring thousands of hands-on classes. I've been really enjoying this class about creating pro videos with tools you already own, which has enlightened me on how to make the most out of my camera equipment. The teacher, Mark Shazosimo, or at least I think that's how his name is pronounced, does a great job of clearly explaining things. Now, if only they offered classes that would help me improve my Italian. Oh wait, they do! In fact, Skillshare offer classes on all sorts to help you develop and improve the creative side of your life. Now, you're probably thinking that a Skillshare subscription is really expensive, but they have a special offer for you, my dear viewers. The first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up using my link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. Anyway, with that, I think it's time to go and board our train and head to Milan. To access the platforms, you have to first pass this gate line, a priority lane is provided for business and executive class passengers, which is nice. Although, like I say, it really wasn't all too busy this morning. And here comes our train arriving from Salerno just now, which is just southeast of Naples. We'll be travelling aboard the crown jewel of the Trenitalia fleet today, in the form of this Fresh Arossa 1000 unit. Built as a joint effort by Hitachi and Bombardier, they entered service in 2015 and have an absolutely crazy design top speed of 400 kilometers an hour or 249 miles an hour. However, they are limited to just 300 kilometers an hour or 186 miles an hour in service. Now, I don't know about you, but I certainly think that they look the part from the outside. So let's get on board and see what these trains have to offer. Now, as I've mentioned in previous videos, 
I've had a bit of trouble filming on Trenitalia trains in the past, particularly when moving between classes of travel. So, to hopefully prevent this, we'll have a look around the train as we board. Four classes of travel are offered on this service, spread out across eight coaches. The lowest class of travel is standard class, which you'll find in the rear four coaches in this instance. Laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration, this is of course where you'll find the cheapest fares. Then there's one coach of premium, which is basically just a slightly spruced up version of standard. Although I believe you also get a welcome drink and snack here too. Separating premium and business class is the cafeteria, although this was closed due to COVID restrictions at the time of filming. That said, an at-seat service will still be offered on today's trip. In the other half of the cafe car, there's accessible seating for business class passengers, including a space for wheelchair users. Business class is laid out in a 2 plus 1 configuration, consisting mostly of table seats, but there are a few airline style seats towards the carriage ends as well. I have coach 2, seat 17A today, which I selected from a seating plan when booking. For a first class seat, legroom isn't too bad, certainly more than enough for our just over 3 hour trip today. A footrest is provided for each of the airline style seats, and a bin can be found too. A tray table of the large and sturdy variety is also provided, which is always great to see. In addition, coat hooks can also be found, and you'll find an Italian style plug socket, as well as USB chargers, underneath your seat. These seats do offer a little bit of recline, but for a first class seat, it's really not a great amount. And then where these seats really start to fall apart for me. They're really not that comfy at all, being hard and not particularly well shaped. And I must say, I'm not really a fan of the beige leather covering neither. And lastly, you'll also find a window blind. So overall, a pretty disappointing seat. But I appreciate that this is just my opinion. So do let me know your thoughts on these seats in the comments below. By the way, if you want to see what to expect from executive class, or even the business class meeting room that Trenitalia offers on board, then be sure to check out my ETR 500 video I mentioned earlier, as the executive class coach was pretty well guarded on this service. Anyway, before we head speeding on up to Milan, let's just take a quick look at our route for today. Our journey will see us heading north, running non-stop to Bologna via Florence, before heading northwest to Milan, covering a distance of roughly 570 kilometers or 354 miles. Despite our relatively long journey today, scheduled travel time is just three hours and 10 minutes. And we depart the Italian capital, bang on time, at 10 to seven. Shortly after departure, the crew came round to distribute welcome drinks and snacks. I went for a coffee and a can of water, as well as some sort of cereal bar. Well, basic, I guess it's better than nothing. Anyway, we're now fast picking up speed as we head away from Rome and through the rather beautiful early morning sunrise towards Florence and Bologna. Another thing I'm not really a fan of on these trains are the interiors. For me, the lighting is just too bright and coupled with the beige seats, it all just looks a bit lifeless, don't you think? 
However, I am a fan of the fact that it almost looks like we're flying, thanks to the low-lying fog, somewhat giving the illusion that we're above the clouds. While we may not actually be flying, we sure as heck feel like we're going through a patch of turbulence. Even on the section between Rome and Florence, where the speed limit is 250 kilometers an hour, the ride quality was really poor and certainly not what I would have expected from Italy's flagship train. I've travelled on this section of track a couple of times with Italo and experienced this on neither their AGV nor their Evo trains. So I can only assume that this is a problem with the Frescherossa 1000 and the ride quality only got worse once we hit the 300km an hour sections of track north of Florence. Shortly after the snack service, the crew came around once more, offering freshly ground espresso coffee. Given that we're in Italy, I just couldn't turn this down, and I certainly didn't regret it. This really kicked my body into action and woke me up. While I may not be having the most comfortable of rides, at least we're blasting on by the cars on the adjacent A1 highway. Driving between Rome and Milan would take over double the amount of time compared to the train, and that's not even accounting for stops along the way. Just over an hour after leaving Rome, we find ourselves slowing significantly as we pass just north of Florence city centre. While we won't be stopping here today, some trains do, although it's a bit of a faff as stopping trains have to reverse directions here as the main station has no through platforms. However, thankfully our route just bypasses this today. Now, I really wish I could have shown you what laid between Florence and Bologna, but all but around 5 kilometers of the 78.5 kilometer route between the two cities is in tunnels. Now, you didn't think I'd forgotten, did you? Well, there's nothing to really see outside, we might as well check out the toilets. And yeah, Trenitalia were really on form here, with everything being spotlessly clean, well stocked, and in good working order. This train is also kitted out with complimentary Wi-Fi throughout. For train Wi-Fi, the download speeds are very good indeed. The Wi-Fi can also be used to access the onboard entertainment portal. Just over an hour out of Milan, we arrive at our only intermediate stop of Bologna Centrale. Amongst other things, of course, the city is known for its abundance of porticos, which are sort of like porches with walkways. The city's porticos cover over 38 kilometers or 24 miles, which is more than anywhere else in the world. Shortly after Bologna, we resurface back out into the sun.
in seemingly no time at all, we find ourselves slowing as we close in on Milano Centrale. To be honest, I've been left with mixed views on this service. On the one hand, you've got a fast, frequent and convenient service. These trains are a very popular way of travelling, not just between Italy's two largest cities, but around the country in general, evident by the fact that this service was practically full. On the other hand though, I just don't think that these are great trains. Now, this may be somewhat of a controversial opinion. I mean, most people seem to really like these Fresher Rossa 1000 units, but I just found them to be not very comfy at all. The ride quality to be very poor, and the interiors to be very bland and mundane. A stark contrast to the older, but in my opinion, far superior ETR 500 set that Trenitalia also use on their Fresher Rossa services. As for the cost, well, I paid €73.90 for my one-way business class ticket, booking about three weeks in advance. Now, needless to say, it's not exactly the cheapest, although you can sometimes pick up a business class ticket for just over €50 Euros if you book far enough in advance. Just for comparative purposes, standard tickets seem to start at around €38, Euros. premium starts at around €45, and executive class starts at around 155 euros. Also, considering these prices, I do think it's a bit stingy that Trenitalia charge two euros if you want to select your seat. I mean, this isn't Ryanair after all. For me, the best way of travelling between Rome and Milan is on either one of the older ETR 500 trains or on Italo's AGV sets, both of which are fantastic. But what are your thoughts and views on the Fresherossa 1000 business class experience? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Anyway, welcome to the largest city in the north of Italy, Milan, where we've actually arrived 5 minutes early at about 5 to 10. With that, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to help us out by giving it a like. If you're new to the channel, then be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Friday.